welcome to the Daily Dragonfly. Today I'm going to continue. It is Tuesday and what I want to do is go in here and really see what I can do with some more of these colors. I'm not done with my dots. I'm not done with my dragonflies, but I want to see how this paint overlaps. So I'm going to just look at all these pretty little autumnal colors and I'm going to put some brighter colors over it and just see what I have. So we're going to put on here some orange lines randomly. Don't worry about where they go. Just put some lines down, different colors. Create some patterning. All right. And I'm going to go into my yellow. I'm using these sunshiny colors. It's always nice to start your week with sunshiny color. All right. And just keep playing. You don't have to use lines. You can use squir swirls, whatever you like. But what I want to do is just get some patterning on here and color overlap. That's what I'm. That's my goal. Overlap some of these colors. See what we've got today. I'm using a size six Princeton Heritage brush. Gives you a little thinner line. some purples. I think I'm just going to go ahead and go like this. Add some purple right over top to see what that does. All this play, really, it's just me being interested in what happens to the colors when I start to overlay them. Just gonna go ahead and make that edge a little watery. And I don't mind when colors get a little muddy because to me, when colors get a little muddy, and if you're not familiar with that term, it just means that they get a little darker and more earth tones because the more times you mix color over color over color, you're going to get some of those earthier tones and that's all right. Great for fall pictures, anything you want to do of that nature. I'm just going to put a little yellow right over that. See what that does. I kind of like that. I want to see if it sparkles after I lay the regular paint over it. Or if it starts to push back and hide some of the glimmer, which is okay too. There might be a, a good use for that somewhere. I want to see how it punches that up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna take some magenta here. And I'm gonna go down the body here. So I know we usually kind of make it the size of a thumb, right? That's a good rule. A thumb print to be precise. There we go. <clears throat> now I think I'm gonna switch my brush. Clean it off, dry it upright so you don't mess with your bristles. Another good thing to remember that I don't know if I've mentioned in some past videos is that I always keep my brushes media specific, right? So I don't use these brushes in acrylic or any other medium. Oil, I use them all and I don't mix my brushes. I keep a set for watercolor, a set for oil, and a set for acrylic. And if you're wondering why I do that, it's because they're very different mediums. They dry very differently. Um, and I want a lot of control with these nice, beautiful points um, for watercolor. And sometimes when you use acrylic, you know, because it's a plasticine, it'll get, if you don't clean the brushes perfectly, they start to get harder and not as responsive. They don't have as much spring back. And that kind of spring you really want for, uh, to keep nice for your watercolors. And, you know, of course you want to keep your, all your brushes as neat as possible, but you know, I use them so much, I do go through them. <laughs> To be perfectly honest. 
try I'm gonna get some blue in here I don't know why this just looks like a really pretty blue I'm gonna go in there and we get some water it down quite a bit I'm just gonna add some blue on here kind of go over some of those other colors see what I've done I think I'll just keep going with that and just keep dragging that light blue with more water. That dark blue becomes a pretty light blue. Kind of see what that does when the purple's bleeding into that, which is pretty. Go ahead and I'm going to keep doing that. Interesting as the I put the water in the blue and it picks up the pink and the yellow. It makes this duskier blue, which is quite pretty as well. So remember, when you paint over other pigments and other things you've already laid on the paper, even if it's dry, if it's watercolor, it will transfer into the color you're painting in the background. Especially if you're using a lot of water, it's going to lift that up. So if you don't want that, you have to go either around it really carefully or... You can use um, a resist, which is either putting, they, they sell it, it's uh, it's like a basically a glue that you can put onto your watercolor paper. And wherever you put it, and then you peel it off after you watercolor, there'll be white paper left. But I've learned that that, um, for me, I'm not really, I've tried it a few times, and I don't like it. <laughs> it pulls the paper up and makes, um, and I know you're supposed to use a little bit, but... I think it's just my technique. I probably have to learn how to use it more. I suppose if I used a pen of it, it would limit how much I could stick on. <laughs> but for me, I've tended to go overboard with it. And then it kind of destroys the outline of my paper and all that. So as you can see, by putting those little lines in the background and carrying this blue and just some water now is what I'm putting on here. I'm creating all these pretty little tones by going over some of the, the pretty sunny lines and crosses um, that I made out of the yellow and the orange. And then down in here, the blue pretty much covered this paper now with water and pulled all those colors together. Kind of made a watery mix here, which I like. And then since I've done that, I can go in and I can add some of those fun water on water types of colors now, which is you know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to drop some colors. Maybe touch the paper a little bit there. Go into the purple, do it again. And the paper just kind of explodes with that beautiful color. So this is really fun for doing backgrounds. Any kind of, um, I mean, look at that. It just really, it loves it. It just pulls across the paper and add some really interesting elements to your background as well. It's all about having fun and experimenting. Like this will probably, you never know. I don't know when I paint over it or when I do some line work on it, I may love it and create some other things or this just is absolutely just gonna be me and I'm just gonna write down, make notes on it. Maybe I'll write a poem over it. Um, sometimes I just like to use these as journal background pages, which are super fun. So here's a green, maybe, if I thought my dragonfly was sitting on a leaf or something, right? And I'm just going to pull that down. I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to um, go in maybe with a little more green. Creating some swooshes, kind of look like grass, which is fine. I like that look. I'm kind of really digging that. All right. Well, there is my water on water and over different things. It's kind of got this beautiful pastel-y appearance to it, and I'm really liking it. I'm going to put one up there. 
So you imagine this dragonfly just resting in a field on some grasses. That's kind of the look I'm going for. And I had no intention of doing that <laughs> when I started, but I think it's kind of turn out kind of cool. And I'm going to create some green around here. All right, I'm just going to let that go. Let it dry. It's really nice to, when you're, especially when you're doing wet amount, it will dry differently as, as the paint starts to dry. So I want to let this dry and I will see you later. This is the end of this daily dragonfly. I will see you with the canvas. Have a wonderful time enjoying and playing with paint. Mwah.